So first of all, why the subtitle? Well, I'm not sure any of you understand how haphazardly this happened. So it started on Twitter, as many things do, and Nebraska JS was like, oh no, we need more speakers for our meeting on Tuesday, which is actually on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> And then, I don't even think that I originally saw this tweet until I was looped into the conversation by somebody asking random people to do a talk, and my reaction was, eh, <laughs> So Nebraska JS was like, quick, everybody send gifts to Kara until she does a talk. So then this happened. <laughs> <laughs> so now this presentation is happening. So I thought to myself, well, what do I know enough about that isn't just like basic coding that might be interesting to other people? And I thought to myself, well, I did a lot of messing around with SVGs while I was in code school because I like to do things kind of art related, so I was like, okay, how about SVGs, and Nebraska JS was like, yay, so here I am, anyway. <laughs> so what are SVGs? Well, SVG stands for Scalable Vector Graphics. Um, they allow you to put vector images on your websites, and all the major browsers at least sort of kind of support them, i.e. just nine and up, but nobody cares about IE. So. so taking a step back though, what are vector graphics? Well, if you don't know what vector graphics are, it's kind of easiest to compare them to the images that most people are familiar with, which are raster, even if you might not know that they were called that. So bitmaps, or raster graphics, they're composed of pixels, so it's just a bunch of squares and a grid, and each square has a color assigned to it, and they make up an image. If you scale them up, they're going to lower in quality because then you can see all the pixels. So you never want to make them bigger than what you saved them at. And you'll often see these as JPEGs and PNGs and GIFs, and so everybody knows what these files are. Um, vector graphics, on the other hand, are not made of pixels, they're made of math. <laughs> so, they're basically just a bunch of mathematical equations determining the points and the lines and the curves and how they make shapes. And because they're just mathematically put together, you can scale them to any size and they'll keep their quality. And you'll see these as SVGs or AIs if you're using Adobe Creative Suite. So why should you use SVGs instead of regular JPEGs and stuff that are already familiar? Well, like I said earlier, they're scalable, so you can make them whatever size you want. You're not going to lose quality. They require less HTTP requests because SVGs, their code is just built into the markup, so it loads faster than the client requesting another image from the server. And one of the most fun things is that you can manipulate them with CSS and JavaScript. So if you want to change the color of it for any reason, you can do that. You don't have to make a sprite with every version of your image. So when you make an SVG, um, if you're some kind of crazy coding genius, you can technically make them by hand, but I'm not a genius, so I use the software. Um, my vector program of choice is Adobe Illustrator, so once you've drawn your vector, you just save it as, as an SVG, and then it spits out a whole bunch of code at you, and you put it in your markup, and you're good. Um, so if you're confused about all the code that it spits out at you, it's okay. You can just open it up in a browser and inspect all the pieces of it. And once you have a better idea what, of what's going on, you can add some comments, or even better, you can add some classes and IDs so that you can manipulate it later. And just some 
tags to get to know that are pretty common. Uh, the entire SVG is contained in the SVG tag. You might see G tags, which are containers for the sub-elements in the SVG. This, you'll often see these if you were using a software to make your graphic. Basically, each, if you were using layers, all of the shapes that were in one layer will be put into one G tag. So they're for organizational purposes. And then you'll have lines and paths and circles and rectangles and polygons, and those are pretty self-explanatory. So when it comes to manipulating the SVGs with jQuery, let's say you just want to turn a polygon red when you click on it. So okay, that sounds easy enough. When you code your CSS, you've got your red class set to fill this shade of red. By the way, polygons and shapes and things, when you're setting their color, you use the fill attribute. It's not background color or anything if it was a uh, block level element. So you've got your red class. And you hop over to your jQuery, and you're like, OK, when this polygon is clicked on, this we will add the class red. And you're like, great, this will totally work. No, it won't. <laughs> Do not fall down the same debugging rabbit hole I did. I spent, I don't know, hours trying to figure out what the heck I was doing wrong. And I was still really new to web development. So I was like, why is it not working? And at one point, I thought that add class, remove class, all that stuff is part of a different library that I needed, so I was putting other stuff on it. But it comes down to um, add class, remove class, and toggle class do not work on SVGs. And there's a bug report about it to jQuery uh, three years ago, and it's been marked won't fix because they hate you. So. <laughs> it's okay. You'll just have to do it a little bit more roundabout way. Instead of using add class, remove class, toggle class, all that, you're just going to use the attribute selector method. So ATTR class, and then set it to your class, and take it off with remove attribute class, or set it to whatever it was before. So to turn our polygon red, it's just going to be this attribute class, set it to red. And that's it. Um, I'm on Twitter, I'm on GitHub. Um, some of the projects where I've been messing around with SVGs, they're all um, public, so you can check them out and see what I've been doing with them. That's it.